tips for surviving long distance relationships. So everybody knows long distance relationships are hard. I mean, relationships are hard in itself when people are in one space. It takes a little more effort to keep two willing parties together, even when they're madly in love. In this video, I'm gonna be giving you some really good tips that could help keep your long distance relationship thriving. And hopefully by the end of this video, you'll be able to share it with your partner as well. And you guys would be good to go. Everything you need to know to keep that LDR going. Keep watching. <sighs> now, long distance relationships are hard. If you've ever been in one and anyone who's ever been in one can attest to that. It's not an easy space to be in. It's not a pleasant feeling, but sometimes you find yourself in one. Many people don't start out in a long distance relationship, but circumstances may dictate that arrangement. There are other instances where people also find love online and it flourishes into something really beautiful. And both parties seem to be really adamant about keeping the relationship going. What do you need to do to let long distance relationships survive? Hopefully this video will give you some insights. Welcome back, my name is Jessica and this is my YouTube channel. The video is sponsored by Passion Air, a Ghanaian airline that operates in Ghana only. If ever you make it to the motherland, fly Passion Air. Go to flypassionair.com now to book your ticket or download the app from the Google Play Store or App Store. You're welcome. Let's jump into today's video. Tips for surviving a long distance relationship. Tip number one build trust. Now to build trust, you must be open and willing to work on the relationship daily. You must learn to be honest in your dealings and as transparent as you can be when it comes to the relationships around you. And I mean the relationships with your colleagues, the platonic relationships, etc. You must learn to be honest in your dealings and as transparent as you can be when it comes to these relationships I mentioned. You must be willing to draw boundaries with other people by effectively communicating your relationship status. Now, the temptation to be overly friendly and maybe even familiar with the opposite sex where you are and where you live will come, but you must be willing to take a firm stance for your relationship. To build trust, you must honor your commitments to your partner whenever you make them, without any excuses. Don't suddenly and frequently change plans as such behavior can and will begin to sow seeds of mistrust. And that's not what you want to do. It may be too early and very harmful for your relationship. Number two, pick up the phone. It's so important in long distance relationships to stay connected. Talking on the phone, FaceTiming, WhatsApping, I mean, whatever app you use is the best way to stay connected because so much can get lost in translation via texting only. It can be easy to go through the busy day replying or relying on only texts and without picking up the phone, but don't fall into that trap. Make time to have a personal conversation where you can. Hear one another's voice, you know, on the phone or see one another's face, if you can, through a video call. One big sign of infidelity or a dying long distance relationship is when one party suddenly seems to be unavailable or unable to pick their phone calls as frequently as they did before and for long periods of time as well. If this has already started happening in your relationship, know that you've already started well, your relationship has already started a decline. A good phone habit to create though would be to talk in the morning, maybe, and even at night. Doing a check-in, in my opinion, during the mornings and in the evenings before going to bed is really important. That way, even though you aren't physically together, you still feel like you're part of each other's days, right? You start the day together, you end the day together. It's a good thing. I think you can try it. Number three, find a way to hang out together while apart. I'll break that down. So research shows that interdependent relationships are proven to be the healthiest form of relationships for marriage. What does it mean? Now that means that you and your partner do things in sync together. 
while maintaining your own separate identities as individuals. Now, because your long distance circumstances are forcing you to do more things independently than you probably like to, it's really important to identify a few activities that you can do remotely, but together. I'll give you an example. So if both of you, for instance, like reading, you could read the same book together. At the same time, you could stream the same Netflix movie while talking on the phone. You could play online games together. You could listen to the same playlist on Spotify, any of these online listening apps, or even eat at the same chain restaurant on the same night. I mean, all of these things help you and your partner feel more interdependent um, and ultimately more connected. Try it out. You never know. Number four, when the time is right, Create a long-term plan for merging your worlds. Now, anyone who's been in a long-distance relationship can attest to the underlying heartache of being apart from the person that you love. If you're in a relationship with the person you want to spend your life with, at some point you'll need to craft a plan to join your worlds together, to be together. Now, whether this involves a wedding, an engagement, a job change, relocation. I mean, be sure to plan or be sure that your plan considers the right next step at the right time for both people. Having the hope of being together long-term can help you ride out the toughest days of being apart from one another. That little bit of hope can go a long way towards making the one that you love seem not so far away. Plus, having an overall objective of a set time to be together gives each party in the relationship purpose and satisfaction, knowing that soon the inconvenience and the torture will end. You'll be together and everybody will be happy. Number five, make time for intimacy. Now, this can be a really great way to keep the spark ignited. It's important to find a time that works best for both of you to engage in a romantic or intimate activities. Put time aside for romance, even when, even though it's virtual, okay? FaceTime, get intimate that way. So you're both connecting with each other to keep the attraction alive. Ensure that each party is completely comfortable with the activity so neither of you are left feeling exposed or and or devalued. Also, remember in the era of revenge porn being a real threat to many people around the world, make sure that your partner is completely assured and protected for posterity's sake. Number six, focus on the positive aspects of long distance. Now it's not all doom and gloom. Being separated from the person you're madly in love with can actually be a positive thing. Okay. Um, yes, you can't immediately change your circumstances, but you can immediately change your attitude. Frustrating as it may seem to be separated, try to think of a few ways your long distance relationship is actually beneficial. Do you, for instance, have more time for hobbies or working out or spending time with friends and family? Make a list of the positive aspects of this long distance relationship and focus on these during the harder days when the distance is really getting to you. Yes, it's tough not having the person you truly love around, but all in good time, everything will fall in place and you will live happily ever after. Number seven, meet in person regularly. So it's important to see each other as much as possible. I know. Depending on the distance, it can feel hard, but it's important. Now, if you're in different countries, for instance, make it a point to see each other at least twice a year. Each person can decide where possible to make a trip to visit the other in the country in which they live. If you live in the same country, but say different states or different cities, it could be maybe a lot more frequent than that. Perhaps every quarter will be ideal, okay? When you're in a long distance relationship, it can be tempting to plan, say, fun, exciting trips to see each other, or it can feel practical to meet one another somewhere in the middle, you know, of where both of you live, okay? But make sure, and it's important guys, make sure that as part of all that, you also visit one another where you actually live, reside. 
Having trips to see one another in the locations where you live is important so that each person can actually see how the day to day for the other person works. It helps a lot by putting things in perspective. And finally, on rare occasions where, for instance, one partner is feeling disconnected or lonely, it can be important to schedule an emergency visit to see them. Number eight, check in with each other's feelings. So show care and concern and your willingness to be there through it all. Ask questions including, how can I support you? What is it that you need most from me right now? How are you feeling? These questions allow the person feeling disconnected to reflect and share what's really at the heart of what they're feeling and what they're thinking. For the person asking it, it shows care and gives them clarity on what is needed most from them, right? Now, if something has changed within the relationship, it's important to begin to question if you are both on the same page and have that harder conversation of whether it's time, for instance, to let the relationship go or work harder towards making it happen. Ask what has changed and what is different. Trust your instincts. And finally, surprise one another with gifts. When you aren't together physically, it's important to show your thoughtfulness in creative ways. If you know, for instance, she would love flowers, get flowers delivered to her. If you know she's feeling under the weather, get food delivered to them as if you were there taking care of them. Here are a few tips for surviving a long distance relationship. I hope it helps people out there. And remember, it really comes down to both of you if it's going to work. It's not gonna be easy, but it's totally doable. Good luck. And uh, well, I'll catch you in the next video. My name is Jessica. Thanks for watching. Smash the like button and remember to share this with other people who will find it beneficial. See ya.